The Pope, who served as the temporal king and the spiritual head of the Catholic Church, presided over a group of nations on the Italian peninsula known as the Papal States. But, by the late 1800s, several Italian states were uniting to establish a single nation-state, as Italy was on the verge of unification. The Papal States were considered as a barrier to the unification of Italy and there was a desire to bring these areas under Italian rule so that they might be governed in the same manner as the rest of Italy. The result was a succession of tensions and conflicts between the papacy and the government of Italy. The Pope refused to acknowledge the legitimacy of the newly unified Italian state because he believed that the loss of the papal states posed a danger to his temporal power. For decades, the matter remained unresolved, giving rise to ongoing tensions between the Italian government and the papacy. This is the Sunday Progress Show. The mid-19th century witnessed the beginning of the process of Italian unification, which attempted to unite several Italian states into a single, undivided nation-state. People like Count Camillo de Cavour and Joseph P. Garibaldi spearheaded this process. Because of this union, the Papal States were slowly added to the brand new Kingdom of Italy, which became official in 1861. As Italian unification advanced, the Papal States, which were temporarily ruled by the Pope, saw a number of geographical losses. Italy's military conquered the Papal States, capital of Rome, in 1870. The Papal States' geographical sovereignty was lost as a result of this incident. One major difficulty that arose when Rome was taken over in 1870 was called the Roman Question. Considering himself a prisoner in the Vatican, Pope Pius IX declined to acknowledge the legitimacy of the Italian government. Resigning from public office, he proclaimed himself a prisoner of the Vatican. Pope Pius IX published a syllabus of errors in 1864, which denounced a number of liberal and modernist ideologies. Since the new Italian state was regarded as adopting many of the concepts denounced in the syllabus, it exacerbated tensions between the papacy and the state. The Holy See and the Italian government negotiated to produce the Lateran Treaty of 1929, sometimes referred to as the Lateran Concordat. The treaty effectively addressed the Roman question and instituted the sovereignty of the Pope over Vatican City as an independent state. It also changed the relationship between the papacy and Italy by recognizing the Holy See as a sovereign nation in its own right. The jurisdiction of the Pope, in his capacity as the sovereign of Vatican City and Bishop of Rome, is referred to as the Holy See, Petrine See, Apostolic See, and Government of Vatican City. The appellation Holy See originates from the Latin phrase Sancta Sedis, signifying Holy Seat. This term denotes the episcopal chair that a bishop occupies, as well as the jurisdiction that falls under his authority. Operating out of Vatican City State, a sovereign and independent country is the Holy See, which is the universal government of the Catholic Church. The Pope exercises authority over both the Holy See and Vatican City State. In accordance with international law, it is therefore a sovereign juridical entity. The Holy See is comprised of the Apostolic Episcopal See, 
of the Diocese of Rome. This see possesses ecclesiastical jurisdiction over the Catholic Church, as well as sovereignty and control over Vatican City. As per Catholic tradition, it was established by Saints Peter and Paul in the first century and serves as the central location for Catholic Christians worldwide to partake in full communion. The Roman Curia, which is Latin for Roman Court, is the governance of the Catholic Church that runs the Holy See. The Roman Curia is made up of different dicasteries, which are like ministries and executive offices. The Cardinal Secretary of State is in charge of the whole thing. Although the term Vatican is occasionally used interchangeably, it is vital to clarify that the Vatican City State was founded specifically with the Lateran Treaty of 1929 between Italy and the Holy See to maintain the papacy's temporal, diplomatic and spiritual independence. The Lateran Treaty made Vatican City a separate country, giving it 44 hectares or 109 acres of territory that the Pope would now be in complete control over. Vatican City's importance predates the Lateran Treaty because it was at the center of a protracted conflict between the state and the church and its establishment as a sovereign city-state was a momentous event in world history. The protracted disagreements between the papacy and Italy were definitively resolved with the Lateran Treaty, which inaugurated a fresh phase in their association and put an end to matters that had endured for decades. You're listening to the Sunday Power Show. On February 11, 1929, three different accords were signed as part of the Lateran Treaty. In the treaty, the Pope was given complete control of Vatican City, which was officially acknowledged as a sovereign state. This section of the pact known as Concordat formalized the connection between the Catholic Church and the Italian state. The discourse encompassed matters including the position of the clergy, religious instruction, and the church's function within Italian society. The Holy See was compensated for the loss of the Papal States in 1870 by an arrangement known as the Financial Convention, which resolved a number of financial challenges. The finalization of the pact was contingent on the participation of four key individuals and organizations, all of whom were represented during the discussions. Roman Catholic Pope Pius XI was in charge when the Lateran Treaty was made and signed. He was instrumental in the discussions as the representative of the Holy See, that is, the papacy. Next up, we have Benito Mussolini. He led the National Fascist Party and served as Italy's Prime Minister. The talks and agreement with the Vatican were made possible in large part by Mussolini's government. In an effort to strengthen ties with the Catholic Church, Mussolini viewed the Lateran Treaty's ratification as a means to garner international and domestic support. Next we have Cardinal Pietro Gaspari, who served as the primary negotiator for the Vatican and was instrumental in ensuring that the interests of the Holy See were adequately represented during the course of the negotiations. He was an accomplished negotiator whose efforts were important in sealing the deal. During this time, Italy's King Victor Emmanuel III presided over the country and participated ceremoniously in the ratification of the pact. The negotiations with the Vatican were started and sponsored by Mussolini's administration. 
Under Mussolini's leadership, the Italian government sought to repair relations with the Catholic Church, which had been strained since the loss of the Papal States and the conquest of Rome in 1870. Mussolini exhibited a profound personal dedication to the resolution of the Roman question, an issue encompassing the Papal States' status and the diplomatic ties between the Holy See and the Italian government. He perceived the ratification of the Lateran Treaty as a strategic maneuver to garner international acclaim and secure domestic backing for his regime. The treaty was signed even though there was resistance in Italy. Mussolini's leadership and ability to control Italian politics were key to this. Due to his influential political stance, he was capable of securing the agreement despite opposition and criticism. In the talks with the Vatican, Mussolini put together a strong team of negotiators led by Dino Grandi to look out for Italy's interests. Mussolini's close ally Grandi had a key role in settling the dispute with the Holy See. Mussolini hoped that the Lateran Treaty would increase his regime standing at home and abroad. Mussolini sought to strengthen the legitimacy of his authority by finding a solution to the so-called Roman question and developing amicable relations with the Catholic Church. Although other nations' reactions to the 1929 Lateran Treaty differed, the world community as a whole largely responded positively and diplomatically. Positive views of the Lateran Treaty were held by many nations. Stability in Euro and the Mediterranean was credited to the resolution of the so-called Roman question and the recognition of Vatican City as a sovereign nation. The region that is now known as Vatican City was politically and religiously significant prior to the Lateran Treaty. Until 1870, the popes had an established authority over geographically distinct areas referred to as the Papal States. Still, in 1870, the unified Italian government claimed almost all of the territory beyond the city walls. For the following 60 years, the church and the secular government were at odds as a result of this. It was written to the treaty that the Holy See and Vatican City would each be recognized as autonomous entities. The majority of nations accepted and acknowledged this new status. The treaty formalized diplomatic ties between the Holy See and Italy and led to the opening of Italian diplomatic missions in both Vatican City and Rome. Following that, a large number of nations established or kept diplomatic ties with both the Holy See and the Italian government. The treaty strengthened ties between the Italian government and the Catholic Church. This was especially noteworthy because the Catholic Church and the Pope had been at conflict with the Italian government since the Papal States were lost in the 19th century. Several ambassadors and diplomats from other countries such as Sir Howard William Kennett of the United Kingdom and Myron Charles Taylor of the United States played important roles in mediating the discussions that ultimately led to the treaty. Most nations acknowledged Vatican City as created by the Lateran Treaty as a distinct and independent state. The Vatican was able to establish diplomatic ties with other countries as a result of this recognition. The Lateran Treaty was regarded as a triumph of international diplomacy due to the fact that it utilized negotiation and compromise 
to resolve a protracted and complicated dispute. The Lateran Treaty underwent revisions in 1985. These updates are commonly known as the Concordat of 1985 or the revised Lateran Pacts. Preamble 14 articles and an additional protocol which should be viewed as an essential component of the agreement makeup of the amended Concordat. The Roman Catholic Church lost its official status in Italy. This marked a significant departure from the initial Lateran Treaty, which had instituted Roman Catholicism as the official religion of Italy. School religious education was now optional. Originally, the treaty had required all public elementary and secondary schools to include religious education. The state ceased to pay the wages of priests. Another noteworthy alteration was this, given that the initial treaty had incorporated stipulations for governmental support of clergy. Many socio-economic changes have happened since the initial treaty was signed in 1929, and these adjustments reflected this. The Vatican and the government, led by the socialist Benito Craxi, confirmed the Concordat of 1985, which was signed in 1985. It changed Italian society in several ways, and still has an impact on it to date. This is the Sunday Progo Show. Benito Mussolini and the Vatican had a complicated and multi-dimensional relationship. Although it would be imprecise to say that the Vatican liked Mussolini, it is accurate to say that the Vatican and Mussolini's government reached a consensus in specific matters which ultimately resulted in the 1929 Lateran Treaty being signed. The Roman Catholic Church was officially acknowledged by Mussolini's government, and its teachings were permitted in public schools. These clauses supported the Catholic Church's objectives at the time. Having said that, it is essential to highlight the fact that there were also serious rifts and disagreements in certain regions. The Italian Catholic Church opposed Italian fascism, while Pope Pius XI opposed the dictatorship of Mussolini. Italy's racial rules were made public in 1938, and church leaders spoke out strongly against them. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Sandeep August. This is the Sandeep August Show. A disagreement between the Vatican and Italy's government called the Roman Question had been going on since 1870 before Mussolini took power. The recognition of Vatican City as an autonomous state as a result of the Lateran Treaty was an important victory for the papacy. This issue was settled as a result of this victory. Although the Vatican acknowledged certain favorable facets of Mussolini's policies, this should not be construed as an endorsement of the entire regime or its individual ideology. Collaboration and opposition characterized the Vatican's relationship with Mussolini, which was intricate at times. Thank you. This is the Sunday Progress Show.